Yo, what up, Josh Rubin from East West Healing and Performance. Today, I want to talk about not masks, not beautiful skin. I want to talk about sunscreen. I want to talk about unsaturated fats. I want to talk about sunburns, and I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. Now, of course, people don't go into the sun and put on this much sunscreen. Well, some do. You actually see parents lathering up their kids with these uh, sunscreens that are loaded with chemicals and loaded with unsaturated fats. And you've got to read the ingredients of these things, not just your food. Because if you look at the ingredients, even of the healthy ones that are, you know, uh, free of certain chemicals in, in thickeners and things like that, they stu still do have lots of chemicals in them, which we don't know what happens when the sun, the ultraviolet light actually hits them, if that causes free radical damage and oxidation and leads to cancer. But at the same time, you look at a lot of these healthy sunscreens, and they're loaded with hemp oils, they're loaded with different vegetable oils and nuts and seeds oils and avocado oils. And the interesting thing is, those are unsaturated fats. Now, I've talked about at length many times about unsaturated fats in my videos. So we've got to think about it externally, putting it on our skin. We've got to think about it internally from the foods we eat. When you eat unsaturated fats, unsaturated fats, among other things, lodge in your tissues. They actually pull vitamin E from your blood and actually keep, keep, uh, create a vitamin E deficiency. Now, iron can actually waste vitamin E as well and oxidize unsaturated fats in red blood cells and actually lead to hemolytic anemia. But if you look at unsaturated fats, it wastes vitamin E. Vitamin E is antagonistic to estrogen. If you decrease vitamin E, now you don't have that antagonistic benefit, and now estrogen levels can essentially become unopposed. They could go up, whatever it may be. They can overburden the liver and supersaturate your tissues and lead to many blood sugar fluctuations hormonal imbalances, PCOS, hypothyroidism, edema, etc. Excitation of your nerve cells, cell division, cancer. At the same time, iron can do the same thing. So we have to think about this. Let's look at some of the benefits of vitamin E before I go any further. Vitamin E is actually an antioxidant. It actually is um, an antioxidant that stabilizes blood fats. It actually improves circulation and oxidation to your tissues. That's why it's antagonistic to estrogen. Estrogen pulls nutrients and oxygen away from your tissues, away from the fetus, away from the embryo. And vitamin E actually brings oxygen and nutrients to your tissues, to your cells, to actually positively have an effect on cellular respiration. That's why vitamin E is actually very beneficial for cellular respiration. And estrogen actually antagonizes it and actually blocks cellular respiration because it inhibits T4 to T3 conversion in the liver. At the same time, vitamin E is actually vitamin A sparing and vitamin A is actually used in your cells to upregulate energy production, steroidal production, carbon dioxide, and water, which is very regulatory to the thyroid, to your immune system, to your gut, and to your entire body. Vitamin E as well protects against lipid peroxidation and is anti-inflammatory. Poof is an estrogen and iron cause lipid peroxidation. Vitamin E protects against iron and calcification of the arteries and your tissues. Vitamin E actually um, increases the conversion of linoleic acid into saturated fats. It opposes all the actions of estrogen in the body and is progesterone sparing. And vitamin E protects the skin from UV exposure from sunlight coming in contact with PUFAs. Now we have to look at this. Now I did a video on iron. It's a two-part series. You can check it out on my YouTube. I did a video on lipofuscin, what are liver spots, I called it, which is unsaturated fats plus estrogen plus iron. They all waste vitamin E. And they all oxidize in the presence of heat, which causes lipofuscin, which causes an oxygen net at the cell level and at the tissues, which causes increased lactic acid production, etc., etc. That's not the point of this video. You can check out the video on liver spots. My point of this video is, if we're taking in tons of unsaturated fats, if we're putting oils that are loaded in unsaturated fats on our skin, now, according to Ray Pete, Ultraviolet light's primary target is unsaturated fats. Now, we've talked about this before. A saturated fat like coconut oil, you leave it out in a, in a warm temperature, it basically liquefies. It doesn't oxidate. It does not oxidate. That's why, tr or oxidize, that's why tropical fruits have a higher saturated to unsaturated fat ratio. Because they grow in a tropical climate, the saturated fat is very protective for them. It doesn't cause oxidation of their tissues, of their vitality, of their being. You take a saturated fat like coconut oil, you put it in the fridge, it hardens. Well, unsaturated fats do the exact opposite. Now, I've talked about why plants have them, etc. I don't want to go into that. It's their protective internal poison that can lead to altocellular respiration, digestive issues, leading to metabolic dysfunction. But at the same time, 
Unsaturated fats in the presence of heat actually oxidize, and the presence of oxygen actually oxidize. It was actually used in paint cans in the 1930s, but they actually, uh, the vegetable oils and things like that, but in the presence of heat and oxygen, they oxidize. So what happened was they were having trouble opening the paint cans, so they actually had to use something different, went to petroleum, and that's when unsaturated fats started to make their way through misled research into our food supply to actually prevent heart disease, but it actually increased it. And there's a steady correlation between the increase of heart disease in the 1940s and the in incorporation of unsaturated fats into our diet. So if you think about this, anything that causes oxidation in the skin, heat, unsaturated fats on our skin, as well as in our tissues, causes oxidation. If this estrogen in our tissues, which is very common, because PUFAs and estrogen have a very similar function in the body. Well, estrogen and unsaturated fats, in the presence of heat, actually cause an increase in melanin production in the skin. Well, melanin production, as I talked about, is a huge antioxidant. It's actually produced when this oxidation um, in your tissues or on your skin, as well as an increased production of free radicals. So we have to think about, is the melanin, melanin production an actually a sign of cancer, a sign of disease, a sign of aging, or is it a sign of our body's adaptive response, an adaptive mechanism to the unsaturated fats, the estrogens, the stresses in our tissues, and it's actually increasing to try to fight off all this oxidation. So instead of trying to take things to reduce oxidation, instead of trying to put things on your skin to reduce oxidation, why not reduce or eliminate all the things in your life that are causing oxidation? So think about this. If unsaturated fats from the foods we eat lodge in our tissues and decrease vitamin E, which is basically antagonistic to unsaturated fats, estrogen, and iron, if, if the sun oxidizes when it hits unsaturated fats on our skin, which causes an increased production of free radicals, all these things cause an oxygen debt at the cell level and the tissue level, which leads to more inflammation, more free radical production, more oxidation, more burning, per se, sunburning. And that's why most people get a sunburn, because they're loaded with PUFAs, as well as the oils they're putting on their skin are actually loaded in PUFAs. You see this all the time. I used to see this on myself. I was so tan and I put on suntan lotion, but I'd still get burned. It's because the sun's interaction with the hemp seed oil, avocado oil, etc. In the, in the sunscreen, that's actually causing the oxidation. But what if we started to actually eliminate the amount of PUFAs in our diet from elim eliminating fatty fishes, fish oils, cod liver oils, nut seeds, nut and seed oils, a lot of above ground vegetables. We started to eat foods that are low in unsaturated fat, higher in saturated fat. We started to eat the right types of anti-inflammatory carbohydrates. We started to eat the right types of uh, anti-inflammatory proteins and eliminate the unsaturated fats and the proteins we're eating. This stuff is getting in my mouth. If we started to use the right amount of saturated fat in our diet, like coconut oil, which is protective against PUFAs, it actually helps to reduce or detoxify your body of PUFAs, unsaturated fats, and it actually reduces your need for vitamin E. It's anti-inflammatory, antiviral, and antibacterial. It can be used for many things. We can actually protect our body from ultraviolet light oxidizing unsaturated fats in our tissues and skin. Because in a sense, I'm not recommending a high-fat diet or a high-carb diet. I'm recommending an optimal ratio of all macronutrients for that person. But eliminating the amount of unsaturated fats we're taking in our tissue to reduce the amount of unsaturated fats in our tissue, reducing the oxidation, eliminating all these crappy suntan oils that are natural that have all these hemp seed oils and avocado oils in them, and actually use coconut oil as a sunscreen. It, <coughs> it doesn't oxidize in the presence of heat. So now we're not going to get the oxidation, we're not going to get the burning, we're not going to get the skin cancers, the melanomas, etc. Now, of course, you can't put the coconut oil on and go the whole day and not reapply. You have to use it diligently because it's essentially melt off. It doesn't make you super greasy. You can use it with a lot of benefit. And at the same time, what a lot of women like to do, a lot of men like to do as well, but some men don't want to use this, you can actually use Ray Peach Progesterone E. It has vitamin E in it, which is antagonistic to estrogen, iron, and unsaturated fats. It actually will prevent um, oxidation and protect against UV exposure. Get a bottle of coconut oil, whatever the size you get, put about 10 to 20 drops of the Progest-D in there, mix it up, and that can be your sunscreen. If you don't want to use the Progest-D because you're male and you're afraid it's going to affect you, that low of dose won't, won't affect you. It actually will protect you. But you can actually get some vitamin E powder, a clean source, put some vitamin E powder in the coconut oil. Don't put too much, otherwise you're going to be lathered in powder. And you can use that, or just use the, the coconut oil. That's fine. So 
Hopefully you've enjoyed my YouTube clip. I did. Hopefully you've learned something about sunscreen, sunburns, cancers, and what possibly causes it. And it's not really the sun. It's what we're putting in our bodies and what we're putting on our skin and how the sun interacts with it. We can actually manipulate that with the foods we eat and what we put on our skin. So thanks for tuning in, and I'm out of here.